following is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah! Let's go, baby. Are you ready for a break? Uh, yes. Are you ready for a break? Absolutely. Ready for a break? Yeah, and um, so much for that. It's time for The Break on DallasCowboys.com. We were on the break! With Nick Eatman, David Hellman, Ambar Garcia, and Derek Eagleton. Hello, guys. Welcome back to Cowboys Break. It's been a while. Are you guys good? Been, it feels. I was literally just thinking. It feels like it's been a month. It's been a long time. Two weeks. Time. It's fine. Yeah. Feel good. How are you? Good. Derek will be joining us in a little bit whenever he feels like it. You know, that's yeah. his thing. You can do that when you're the boss. He was <laughs> up there watching TV. I think. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's get right into it. I mean, obviously, uh, as of right now, it's been kind of a slow week, and not many things have happened. But one of the things that did happen was last night, Jason Witten, he had his, help me out with pronouncing this, collegiate? Coll- collegiate. <laughs> collegiate. <laughs> wow. Definitely not how I expected to say that word. It's fine. It's collegiate okay. Man of the Year Award. <laughs> well, Aren't you like a 4.0? I was. But I guess they didn't. I guess they didn't it's, say that word. They don't give college. you grades on pronouncing yeah, words. That's okay. true. <laughs> but collegiate had, man of the year, Jason Witten went to Tennessee, picked a guy from Tennessee. Shocker. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, that's. Uh, I actually. I didn't know who Trey Smith was until I went to this thing last night, and that's an impressive dude. Um, which actually, typically, they give that award to a guy who's leaving school, but he's actually going back. Um, but yeah, Jason Witten gives an award to a guy with extremely high on and off field character. Uh, Trey Smith lost his mother in high school and missed an entire year of his college career with blood clots in his lungs and battled back to be all SEC this past season. He's going back to school. Good for him. Um, he did go to Tennessee. So that's long, not why we're talking about. Yeah. No, long story <laughs> but, short, Jason Witten was in the star stories, last yes. night. He was in the star. He got to talk to the media. One of the things that came up once again is whether or not he's going to play this year. And he once again kind of said or confirmed that he does want to continue playing until he can. And he would prefer it to be with the Dallas Cowboys. And he said that he has voiced that opinion. He talked with Mike McCarthy Prior to him kind of gathering his whole coaching staff, he has been in communication with Steven and Jerry Jones. And to let them know that he wants to be here now, basically said that at this point, it's just waiting, waiting on the Cowboys and see what they decide to do, whether to bring him back or not on at least a one-year contract. So what do you guys think about this whole situation? Would you want the Cowboys to bring Jason Witten yeah. back? It sounds messy to me um, because J- he's Jason Witten. And if Jason Witten wanted to come back and play for the Cowboys, you would think that that would be the end of it. I mean, okay, well, you come back and we'll, we'll, we'll make a deal. And, you know, it's not going to be about the money anyways. It's just come back and, and play and we'll figure out the role. But uh, apparently there's, there's a sticking point there. And, um, you know, that's something he's not used to, to experiencing. So uh, I – do I want him to come back? Do I, I mean, yeah, I think he, I think he could because I don't see anybody in his way right now that that's like who he's taking snaps from. Blake Jarwin will play and play a lot, but Dalton Schultz doesn't have to, to me. So um, he still can draft one. But I I would bring him back, but I, I don't get the sense that's going to happen if it's waited this long. I thought it was a really interesting thing that Witt said at the top of his press conference last night was that – this has taken a little bit longer than I wanted it to, or than I thought it would. Yeah. Which, yeah, I mean, you're absolutely right. Uh, if Jason Witten wants to come back, typically you'd think, okay, you know, here's the deal. This is what it'll be worth, and and you're in. And it worked that way for him last year when his longtime friend and head coach was still calling the shots. Obviously, Jason Witten is very, very close with the Jones family and has those allies, but all of his other allies in the building and that's i mean you know his teammates like him and i've never heard a bad word about it in that regard but his allies on the coaching staff are gone like the guys he worked with forever that he had all these relationships with namely jason garrett are gone and yeah i think i mean ultimately 
I, I think like whether or not Jason Witten here, I think comes down to like Jerry Jones and Stephen Jones and Mike McCarthy. Like who wants that more? You know, is Mike McCarthy absolutely insistent that he needs a fresh start and there's no place for this guy on his roster, or are Jerry and Stephen Jones insistent that you know this is Jason Witten and we're going to find a, a way to keep him around for one more year? Which is why I, the other interesting takeaway that I got out of this last night was. He expects to have these conversations when the Cowboys come back from the combine and before free agency. So, like, this isn't a typical free agent. Like, I, like you know, you're yeah. not. This isn't a guy on his first contract that wants to test the market. This is a guy who's just looking for the right landing spot. He wants it to be here. So, I think it's interesting to think that one way or another, this will be resolved before free agency opens in March. So, you know, ideally within the next two and a half to three weeks, we would have an answer. Um, me personally. It's nothing against Jason Witten. You change the coaching staff over. Um, he was fine last year. I don't think he was dynamic. I don't think he helped you in the red zone. He maybe didn't hinder Blake Jarwin as much as I thought he would before the season, but he still ate up a lot of those snaps. Uh, I I would rather turn the page and start fresh. Again, nothing against him, but I just think you know, you're know you already changing the coaching staff over. You might as well take that final step and just move into a new era completely. Uh, but I will be interested to see who wins out in that decision-making process. Well, you know, you tend to, usually when you see the group of guys in your roster, you tend to pick out the guys that seem better. You know, you mentioned out of the group, Jason Witten is still better than the rest of them. And, and yes, but at this point, when you start analyzing the whole free agency, are there any tight ends out there currently that might be better than Jason Witten? Or mm-hmm. not necessarily better, but could contribute more on the field than what he did last year? Yeah, well, the, the thing is, and I say this about better, I mean, obviously, uh, more dynamic down the field players is, is still on, is on your roster. And Blake, say- Blake Jarwin. He is better at that. I don't, I mean, maybe, you know, Jason Witten has forgotten more about tight end than like 99% of people will ever learn. I get that. Like maybe in the all encompassing duties of the position, he might be better than Blake Jarwin. But like, can you definitively say he's a better option based on what we saw last season in terms of like being a dynamic element of the offense? I don't think you can say that anymore. No. I think Blake Jarwin is the better option at this point you in can't. their respective careers. Right. But I you know, to me I'm looking at tight end like I look at who's the best cornerback, second or third corner. Well, they're both gonna play. So I mean I don't know if it really matters who runs out of the starting lineup. Now to Jason Witten it does. That does matter. And I don't know if he's willing to to be the backup there, but we can see that two tight ends can play. But I don't see where D- Dalton Schultz has to I mean, where's a role for him? Now, I'm I'm still drafting a guy. Now, you know, if Witten comes back, that might change where you draft a player. And you said you said on the draft show a few times it's not a strong draft class for tight ends, really. No, it's ironic. It's not top heavy. It was a fantastic class last year, and that is not. I mean, there are good players in the draft at tight end this year, but it's not what it was last year with two to three first round caliber talents. You know. Guys that were that you could have gotten in the third round that might have been able to push for a starting job. I don't think you're going to see that this year. There is a tight end I think that's going to be a free agent, Eric Ebron. Yeah. Now, now he's a guy that is your. He's a guy that Jerry Jones would would like to sign because he's a former first round pick. I think tenth overall. Didn't really work out for the Lions. Went to the Colts. Pretty good. He's like 26 years old. That's a guy. Which yeah. No, I mean he he was. Um, he was the 2014 draft class, so he's he's Zach Martin's draft class. He's definitely he's he's not 26 then. He well, it depends on. I mean, all those guys come out at different points. I don't know how old Eric Ebron is, but I I do know he was good enough in Indianapolis that I think he would be a little more expensive than the Cowboys would want to pay for him in free agency. I think he's also like the Colts are not in a hurry to resign him. Chris Ballard up there like made it pretty clear that he was not a priority so like you wonder about fit in terms of like locker room culture and stuff like that and he's and he is a another Blake Jarwin type of like pass catcher and 13 touchdowns in 18 last year was kind of ugh, not great but I mean I mean he's a pass catcher he's in red zone three yeah no and, for and sure that's, but that's important too that's what the position has become anyway yeah. I mean on like yeah. and that's I mean that's always been the argument about Jason Witten anyway right is like there just aren't that many guys that can do it all anymore it's become too much of a pass happy sport uh and I do I wonder about that because like under Jason Garrett that was always going to be the thing is like well can he block we don't want him if he can't block is that going to be the thing under Mike McCarthy I'm not 100 percent sure 
Were what, you gonna say something you, else? I was gonna ask, are you? What are you doing? Are you bringing them back? No. <laughs> and I, I, you know, people attack me when I write things out on some of Cowboys, and I put that out because I, and I get it from a fans, fans per perspective. You want your guy, you love Jason Witten, what he's done, but I think that at this point, it kind of slows you down and. Even though he he has made some good things for you, he made some good things for you last year. At this point, I think that the Cowboys just need someone more dynamic and let Blake Jarwin kind of take a bigger role there, but bring somebody else that you know. What do you want to be? What do you want to be as a football team? Uh, you want to be young, fast, and cheap. Like honestly, in the NFL, like those are three of my biggest things. Jason Witten's not any of those things at this point in his career. And I mean, he's not super but who, expensive. But who says that? Who says young, fast, and cheap? Me. I just did. <laughs> okay, but that, you act like that's a thing. Like I, th I think it is. That's. I mean, you want young, durable. If you're just gonna take three things, you're not gonna just take young, fast, and cheap. Well, I mean, like talented is obviously like the number that's the one. That's Dallas but, Renegades. Well, you they're know what my problem is. No, it, they're not fast, or they'd be in the NFL. Like what? that's, and most of them aren't young either because they already had failed NFL careers. They're still relatively not failed, young, but. Last I, year, sorry, I was just going to say last year, I was excited of him coming back because I thought, oh, wow, okay, Dak can definitely use him in the red zone, and he can definitely improve that whole area where the Cowboys struggled in the previous year. Right. And it wasn't the case. Like, last year, the red zone didn't improve that much. They were still struggling. So, to me, there wasn't much of a difference there of, you know, having him and not having him. Yeah, I mean... Okay, I, I, I see that point, too. I'm still thinking about this one, though, as well, because the thing is, is Dak, Zeke, and you wanted to pay these guys. But, you know, you want to keep them. You want to keep Dak, right? You know, yeah. I mean, so, I mean, he's not going to be cheap, and he's not going to be young, and, and you're banking on the fact that his experience is going to help Dak us. Dak is so, very young by quarterback standards. So I, but I still think that experience matters. You could convince me that Jason Witten doesn't need to be here maybe because of more of a changing of philosophy, changing the guard, turning the page, let's get done this way. I can maybe see that. But I don't believe that, that he held him back. I mean, it was the number one offense in the league. I don't think he was holding them back. I don't think he, Not was, holding I don't them think back. he was holding them back, but I just don't – I'm not convinced that the value he brought was – was all that much, honestly? So, what are you trying to say? You want him back, or no? I, I yeah, I mean, I, I if 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 Jason Witten can can kind of loosen the grip a little bit as far as how much he plays, which I think that we saw that a little bit last year, we'll probably see more of it. Then, then yeah, I don't see any reason why he couldn't come back. Um, I don't think it's going to be about money. I, I still want to see Blake Jarwin, but I'm not convinced Blake Jarwin's just been you know sitting there with like shackles on just ready to bust out and go to the hall of fame i mean i'm not ready to see that but i do think he's he's dynamic and needs to play more but i there's nobody else on the roster that i'm like well hi i mean who's he gonna play in front of it's like, just it's so i it's it's like a needlessly complicated problem though is like and, and you're like i don't think blake jarwin's like a pro bowler but i think he's he's a dynamic player you saw what he could do in the seam you saw what he could do in the red zone you saw what he can do after the catch that's really important. That's something that hasn't been part of Jason Witten's game if, in a while. If he would be Antonio Gates and do that role, and Antonio Gates, the who Hall of Famer numbers, all that for the Chargers, and then they drafted Hunter Henry. Yeah, and you know they they basically he. I mean, he's been on the team, but he hasn't really been like the main guy. To be, and if that was fine, if if, if he was fine with that and he wanted to do it, like I'm not gonna raise a stink about it. That's totally fine. But the, at at that point, like. Why though? Like why? And and then he's Jason Witten, the backup, and like he's on TV and he's still talking on Thursdays, but he's not really playing as much. And it's it's not a distraction, but it's just like, but what are you doing it for? Like, well, what's the value versus the spotlight? Whereas you could roll Blake Jarwin into the starting role and draft a guy, and he could serve the same purpose, and he would just be, oh yeah, that's the guy we drafted in the third so, round. So what if he is a a backup player who can who, who can contribute can play and he's going to help these young guys in there in the locker room I, like I said I'd, I'd be fine with that okay. that doesn't bother me I just I don't think it's all that valuable I just okay. why and 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 you Let's like transition I said, then that's I mean Sean Lee 
<laughs> well, I knew I I'm knew just saying, you were gonna bring his name up. Because it's why does Sean, Sean Lee? Lee get in the past? Why does Sean Lee get to come and do this and well because he's Sean Lee and all that? I mean, why not Witten? <laughs> because Sean Lee played such a more vital role to this team, in my opinion, in all honesty. And you're you Did he? Yeah, absolutely. Ow. Because he started thir- he started ten games, like the last ten games of the year when your first round pick went down. Had a hundred, depending on if you use coaches tape or official stats keepers, he had like eighty to one hundred and twenty tackles. Played some of the best, like played at a really high level, and held your linebacking core together, which maybe wasn't the worst position group on your team, but was certainly the most disappointing. Like absolutely, and and Blake, like Blake Jarwin, didn't set the world on fire by any means, but he showed glimpses of ability when he got his chances. And I just, like I said, I mean, I just, it, it, Sean Lee said that he wants to play, and I just stop feel like it. He's Why good. are you trying to cause drama I'm where just, there is no need? I, I'm just <laughs> like, saying, I, is there alone. any doubt that Sean Lee he wants, says he wants to play? I mean, I, I bet they're going to re sign him. I think Sean Lee is needed much more on this team than Jason Witten is right now at this moment in their careers. Okay. I, I think so. I, I can't go with you on that one because, because Sean Lee is needed, but hey, let's, let's be honest. Sean Lee can get hurt like that and, sure. and will get hurt. And He and, didn't this year. Because he didn't play. He played the last 10 games. He started them. He played 13. I, th- I think he might have even started 13. He started 13 games. I'm sorry. He started three at Sam when everybody was healthy, and he started like the last nine games of the year because Leighton's neck was hurt. He played a lot this year, and he played well. But it's such a different pos- position, too. It's like you can't – to me, you can't really compare the two. Because of the roles on the field. It's just completely different. I think you they're do, very you comparable. Do, uh, I don't think so. I, to okay. me, you do way more as a linebacker. You can get hurt. That's when you step in. And Sean Lee's ready to go and attack with some power. He ha- he He's faster. He moves faster <laughs> still. He's getting up there in age. But Witten is starting to slow down. Now, I don't... I, w- I wouldn't and mind. Sean Lee is slowing down too. He's been slowing down. For he a absolutely while. is. Okay. Yes, I agree. Who's more reliable? Jason Witten. All right. Yeah. I mean, it, it's all I'm saying is, and, and this. Don't, <laughs> Why are we the, comparing the two? <laughs> well, because they're older and they're good and they're veterans and they're white and all that stuff. I mean, they're just easy to do. It's just easy to say that. No, you know? I mean, you it's don't even easy to compare these two guys. They are <laughs> the last. They are the last holdovers from the older era of the Cowboys, like yeah. the mid 2000 Cowboys. They're the last and, guys here, and they bring a veteran, experienced, tough, gritty type of player to the locker room. And I mean, I. Again, I, I love Sean Lee, and I love the fact that he's coming back. I'm just saying it just You don't know that weird. he is yet. Well, I think he wants to play. He wants to play. He could be in the same boat. As, for be. all we he know, could he, he could be in the have, exact same boat. He just doesn't yeah. have the award. He hasn't he, spoken yeah. publicly because he's Sean Lee. Yeah. He doesn't really like to do that. Yeah. Like, he could do the exact same thing where free agency rolls around and the Cowboys are like, we love you. Like, we would love to have you if you're willing to go into the season as the backup. You get 40% of the snaps if everything goes well. Maybe you start if somebody gets hurt. And he could say, screw that. Right. I got a house on the West Coast, and the Chargers need a starting linebacker more than you do. So here I go. Like, we don't know what's going to happen. That's true. He does seem like the type of guy that would go play for another team more than Witten would. To me, I have a hard time imagining either one of them doing it. To be honest yeah. with you, them, j- just because we haven't ever seen it, and like they kind of embody the whole Cowboys spirit so well. Yeah. Um, All right. I don't know. Well, I didn't expect to spend the whole segment talking about tight end, yeah, but I, that's okay. That was interesting. Let's go ahead and take our first break, and when we come back, let's start discussing once again the quarterback position. But all these free agent guys that are in the market right now. Your new apartment's big. Such a great deal. Uh, it's okay. Just okay? What's not too... Right above the subway! Well, I bet you don't even notice it after the... That's my neighbor, Angus! A deal that's just okay is not okay. Get a great deal with America's Best Network. Come into an AT&T store to find out how to get one of our popular smartphones for $0 down. 
based on GWS1 score September 2019. Do you want the most interesting, up-to-the-minute Dallas Cowboys news straight from the star in Frisco? How about exclusive and on command? That's right, news and nuggets you can't find anywhere else. With our exclusive Cowboys content on Alexa, you can have all the answers, secrets, stories, and more. What's Stephen Jones thinking during a game? What's Joe Looney's favorite pregame meal? We take your questions to Cowboys players and coaches, and you can hear the answers directly back to you. Just say Alexa, open Dallas Cowboys. Whether you're into being a part of this or more into something like this, SeatGeek has the tickets to the events you love. It's the easiest way to find, buy, and sell tickets. Plus, with their deal score technology, they'll recommend the best seats in the house at the best value. So the next time you're craving this, download the SeatGeek app and let's go. Seeky. Ladies and gentlemen, it's that time again for tailgating with the Otterbox boys. Otterbox, the company that builds wildly overproductive phone cases? The one and only. But cases are just the start. Otterbox is the official outfitter of tailgating. If they can keep my phone safe, what can they do for my parking lot party? How about protecting your beverages from suboptimal drinking temperatures with their elevation tumblers? And Otterbox elevation tumblers come in three sizes. A 10-ouncer, a 20-ouncer, and even a 64-ounce growler. Check out all the colors and sizes of their elevation tumblers at otterbox.com back to the break all right welcome back guys now the quarterback position is a position that we've been talking about since last year obviously we're still waiting on the whole Dak Prescott contract to get resolved and see what Wait, happens what's, there. what's going on with that is that is that like a topic of conversation these days people talking about Dax not really no okay. I mean and not the gonna, right ones. Eh. No, good point. Not, yeah. the, not the actual agent and not the, the people Cowboys. that can actually get it done. Maybe they are, because Steven said it was heating up, I and hope he so. said things are about to heat up, and it's like forty degrees outside. So I don't think he was talking about that. Please do something. You want to talk about weather? No, no, I don't. Oh, okay. Let's. Sorry, let's, I didn't mean to. No, it's all good. It's all good. Okay, we've talked about Dak quite a lot, mm-hmm. and we're still waiting on that. Assuming that happens, the the Cowboys sign Dak Prescott to a contract, blah, blah, blah. Okay, all good. Let's talk about the backup quarterback position and what happens Ah. there and what the Cowboys should do with that, given the fact that there are a lot of veteran guys out in the market uh, with free agency. And this is something that, you know, a lot of fans start commenting on and asking questions. Oh, is this guy coming here or so-and-so, you know? So what are your expectations with the backup quarterback, should they keep keep Cooper Rush, who's been here, what, three, four? Three, four years? Yeah, he just finished his third year, I believe. Third year? Which, yeah, because he's a restricted free agent. So it's a really interesting conversation. And it, you keep I keep copping out because you have to change everything you think you know about the way they do things because it's a completely different coaching staff. Like, Cooper Rush was... He was Jason Garrett's that he was that staff's guy. They found him. They developed him. They loved him. Mike McCarthy doesn't know this dude. He didn't play a role in his development. Mike McCarthy has been a quarterback friendly coach for his entire career. He might have a completely different idea of like what he wants in a backup player. Like yeah. the Cowboys haven't invested in a in a veteran backup in a long time, not since Kyle Orton. It's hard to believe that they would want to do that if they're gonna drop a bunch of money on Dak Prescott, but it might be something Mike McCarthy values, or, or you know, drafting a quarterback is always a good idea, in my opinion. That could be a, a you know an avenue they go down. They haven't done it. They did it two years ago with Mike White. It didn't work out, but keep trying to punch those lottery tickets, man. I think you should do it all the time. Honestly, Drafted quarterback. Yeah, I mean, not with a big pick, but it's, day three, hell yeah, yeah. This is this conversation is assuming that Zach. Dak signs. Assuming yeah. he signs. Cuz it cuz to me it, it's kind of like walking, you know, like walking to your table at a restaurant, you're really hungry and you just walk past the the dessert menu or dessert tray and you're like, okay, well we'll talk about that in a little bit. Well, let's focus on this. Once we get this down, then we'll see. Because I think what happens with Dak and how much you pay him is 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 kind of will affect what happens with it with the backup quarterback. But like you said, let's just, let's assume that it's fair market and all this. Um, I think you do need to get a little bit more of experience there. A guy that you feel like if he has to go in and play in the game, it's not going to change a lot. You're not having to worry what's Cooper Rush going to be like. 
you know, give me a guy that's done it. He's started some games. I'm sure there's some out there. That, there are actually that way. there are quite a few. Um, Have any names? I do. I mean, the one that jumps off the page to me is Colt McCoy. Obviously, yes, Texas guy spent forever in Washington. I'd be all all aboard that train. Me too, because he's a guy that's not gonna. You know, he's not gonna. I mean, unless you're a UT guy, you're not going to be like, every time Dak throws a pick, you're like, let's play McCoy. Like, no one's going to do that. But if something were to happen to Dak, and nothing yeah. ever has, but Correct. if it it's does. It's someone you've seen yeah. and do some things. And he can step right in and play. Yeah. And he's played, he's beaten the Cowboys, I think, when they he were 6-1, 7-1. and one, seven and one. When they had Tony Romo. Yeah, yeah that, was a, that was a game where, you know, the Cowboys were rolling and the Redskins were struggling and it was a Monday night game and he came in and beat them. Career backup, Chase Daniel is available. I'd love that. A.J. McCarron is an un- uh, unrestricted free agent. Drew Stanton. Chad what about McCarron? Do you like that? I mean, you know, he went to Alabama. That's his choice. It's fine. <laughs> right. But, yeah, I mean, if, if the Cowboys were interested, I don't think that's a terrible idea. Um, Case Keenum. It's hard to gauge. Uh, Matt Moore obviously has a history with the Cowboys. He was uh, yeah. Mahomes' backup in KC and played well when he needed to this year. Um, yeah, I can see that. Shoot, Blake Bortles is available. Like, and I like these names aren't going to get you excited. That's not the point. But like, these are all guys that have started NFL games. Some of those guys are going to be pricey because they play Griffin. they play quarterback. I don't think he's available. I might be wrong. Um, I don't see him on the list. Yeah. I, uh, you know, Cooper Rush isn't isn't a name that gets anyone excited either. So, but but I think but these guys all the more, guys I just named have started yeah. meaningful games in the NFL. Like, I would go that route. I I would I would I would get a guy in here like that. Some experience, a little bit. None. I know this is. I mean, this is so like the quarterback market is obviously absurd. But like, if you get a guy like that, you're paying good money for that. It's true. That's not cheap. And are you willing to do it? That is, that will be more than what they would pay for Jason Witten or um, Sean Lee to come back. Don't you think? Oh, easily. Four to five million easily. a year? I, Ten? Yeah. Pump that thing up. Depending on how qualified you want your quarterback to be, you're All probably, right. I mean. Right, Cooper Rush, then. Which, based on what you know. <laughs> okay, so it's not that important to you. No, it isn't. No, okay. Not at 10 million a year. I mean, it, I mean, it depends on the quarterback. Like, I, I, all right. I don't need Keep talking million. while I look I don't, at I don't want to pay a guy 10 million to wear a ball cap. Okay. And you know what? If it happens where Dak's out three or four games, you know what? That's bad, but but it's not like these guys are, are like the savior. Like you will definitely win if Chase Daniel starts for you. I mean, you know, you're still gonna See, struggle. Colt McCoy was only making four million a year on his last deal. That's f- phenomenal for me. I'm on board with that. Okay, but again, like some, it just depends on how experienced he is. Like the Eagles paid Chase Daniel a staggering amount of money to not ever play for them a few years ago. Because you can command that when you're a quarterback. It's a lower number than what we talk about with Dak because you're not talking about regular starters. But quarterbacks just get paid more money because things go to hell if you don't have one, even if it's just a backup. It's, it's just like what? insurance on your house and yeah. car. You know, you're paying I guess you for can it. make the argument of, okay, well, we haven't necessarily seen Cooper Rush playing with all the starters. Fair. But Very fair. How, I don't know. I don't know if that makes me feel any more better. You know, he plays pretty well in the preseason games. He, Remember, he wasn't playing that well going into Hawaii. He played he like a okay. legend as a rookie. Like he was yeah. amazing. And then it's just kind of been eh, ever since. Which which you would also, he's not playing with starters. You could also I get describe that. the offensive backup offensive line. Absolutely. As, I mean, not eh is actually pretty good. For <laughs> but that. even at practice, though. Seeing him making, Dak's not making some practice. Okay, so we can't talk okay, about that's practices. okay. But still, Here's, you you expect the growth to happen, and it was like it's been backwards. You know, this Never is an interesting. This is an interesting wrinkle for me. Cooper Rush is a restricted free agent, which means if you want to bring him back, you have to tender him. Mm-hmm. Which there's three. You know, you can tender him as a first round pick, second round pick, or the round originally drafted, which he was not drafted. So I think that's a really interesting dynamic because you can tag him as a second round pick and that scares teams away because then you got to, if you want to sign him, you got to give up a second round pick to get him. It also means, you know, he's making probably like Colt McCoy money. Like yeah. I think it's, I think it's three, 3.5 as a second round pick and it jumps up to like four or five as a first round pick. If you tender him in the round you originally drafted him, 
the, anybody can sign him and they don't owe you anything because he was not drafted. So he's not technically worth a draft pick. So I'm if the Cowboys want to keep him, I'm curious what they would do there. And there is a fourth option for those restricted guys. What I've seen the Cowboys do is they'll they'll they say they'll they'll buy the restricted year. So they'll they'll give him a deal and you know like a two year deal and they'll they'll pay him for this one and then the next one. So he's not really going into the, his last year. But um, I think he comes back. But I don't think he's the only backup option there because you said it way at the start here it's hard to talk about this because you don't know what the staff how the staff values this i just think mike like mike mccarthy's calling card his whole career has been offense like he's tied at the hip to aaron Rodgers for better and for worse he's an offensive minded guy he's a I don't know if he's a quarterback guru but like that's kind of been his thing right and it's hard for me to believe with everything that I know about football coaches, that he's going to walk in and be like, "Oh yeah, this guy's good." Like yeah. you know, like I, yeah, this guy that was here with the last, like I, I like him just as much as the last staff did. Yeah, I don't, I, and I base that on nothing other than my experience knowing that like football coaches want their guys and they want things their way. You know, I just thought about this. Um, so Brett Favre was still had a few years left. You know, when he played, he played three or four more years, right? Yeah. And it was a I mean, Brett, it's Brett Favre. He's won three MVPs at the time, won a Super Bowl, and they moved on to Aaron Rodgers, and he was the head coach for that. So this just kind of stems back to the last conversation we had or the previous uh, discussion about Witten and Sean Lee. He's had to do this before where True. he parted ways with Brett Favre, and that was that was tough for the fan base to, to understand, you know. So um, – He's he's. I'm not saying that was his decision all the way. Now there was also Aaron Rodgers there, and you're like, yeah. I think Aaron Rodgers is going to be pretty good. I'm not calling Blake Jarwin Aaron Rodgers. I'm just saying <laughs> he's had to make these tough calls before that probably weren't that popular for fans. And I think this one's a little different too because I think fans would probably be okay with it with Witten. I think most I get a sense that they're kind of like. I think most fans just kind of want to move into a completely new era, like. They're going to keep their Jason Witten jerseys. They're going to, you know, the, the fathead's not coming down, but they're just ready for a well, new era of Cowboy football. Well, when anyone searches for Michael Jordan highlights, they don't ever say Michael Jordan Wizards. Right. Because they don't want to see Michael Jordan playing for the Wizards because it wasn't the Michael Jordan that they remember. And right. they don't want Jason Witten to come out here and have another year like this. Now, if he doesn't have that one-handed catch against the Rams, that – that would be a lot easier for people to maybe even for himself. Yeah, but I mean, he, Jason Witten's best plays of his career, top five catches ever. One of them is going to be from last year because that was yeah. amazing. It was and a great I, catch. That might actually be hindering this and say. But no. at the same time, he did make a lot of errors that no. you're not used to seeing True. him make. That's what I'm saying. I mean, that catch might have actually been yeah. kind of. It's. It might be that golf shot on number 18 where you hit it right down the middle and you're right. like, I'm. I'm playing next week and you're like. You shot a 112. You're like, you suck. <laughs> that, I'm talking about myself. I've done that. I've played terrible, hit it all over the yard. But the last couple holes, that was the shot. And it gets you to come back and go, I'm playing. I'm playing again. Sign me up. And I guess that's the point I was trying to make in the first segment is, like, if you're going to split snaps and just be a guy, then why not just get a guy? You know? Like, why does it have to be – one of the most legendary players in franchise history, like you can get anybody to fill that role, and including a draft pick who's going to cost you a lot less and can develop into something much better in the future. Is it embarrassing if that guy is just kind of a guy that does also have this like? Your, That's like exactly. This That's my and I life think, side. No, what? I think Jason Witten knows that too. Like he's got a thirty foot mural in the star of him making his helmetless catch, like one of the best moments in recent franchise history. You can't go out to practice and not see it. It's and like, right when you go to practice, you know he he did, he took fewer snaps. Like he was a good team player, and like I'm not saying anything bad about him, but like is he gonna? He's cool just being a guy who gets 45% of the snaps and, like, he comes in in 12 personnel, but Jarwin is playing in 11 personnel a lot more than him. Like, no way. I don't buy that. Which is what just, you know, again, it's nothing against him, but, like, it just sounds easier for everybody if you move on. Like, Jarwin's this guy. You can draft a player in the third or fourth round, and, you know, maybe they won't even be that good. Maybe you'll still have to address this position in the future, but... 
It's just it just feels like time for uh, turning the page to me. See what I did? I got it right back to yeah, thank you. right back. <laughs> which I feel the same way about quarterback as I do with Witten. Like if they want to bring Cooper Rush back, I'm not gonna like write an angry column about it. That's fine. Yeah, because uh, I I, in, I don't anticipate him playing. Dak hasn't missed a game yet in his career, but I would rather sign a Colt McCoy who's been there and done that and honest and if we could draft a guy in the sixth round or you know late just to kind of like have him and you know look at him in training camp like that's the way that I would prefer to go about it Brady doesn't miss a lot of games oh my god okay let's switch up the conversation a little bit (laughs) I'm kidding okay please let's switch up the conversation a little bit and this question is gonna be hard to answer because you know, we still don't know what's going to happen in free agency, and we don't know what's going to happen in the draft. But because it is late February, why not? When you look at the current roster and the guys that the Cowboys do have on their list, who would you say is a guy that you would expect to have a bigger role in this next season? Hmm. Already on, already on the team. Because again, for example, I'll give you an example: a guy yeah. that people are bringing up and mentioning a lot, Jordan Lewis. Okay, maybe okay. a guy that could step up, depending, sure. assuming that Byron Jones leaves and all of that, and maybe he gets a bigger role. Hey, Derek. Hi, Derek. Hi, how's everything going? Hey, man. Great. Yeah, a little, little cornerback, like slightly contentious today. Honestly, like just a really? little. Really, with <laughs> Amber and Nick and, and Dave, air, it's contentious. An air of contention. Okay. Um, so, to welcome you back into the show, let me yeah. ask you this question. We haven't talked about Witten yet at all, so oh. we will. I'm kidding. Don't the, whole show. the whole show. The Witten, whole one show. of those shows? Okay. Who would be a guy that this is without taking into consideration what's going to happen in free agency and the draft? Okay. Who would be a guy in the current roster that could end up having a bigger role this year? I got it. A bigger role. Like anybody who was on the team last year. That's an ascending player, is what you're saying. We'll be yeah. better next year, have more of a role next year. I think um, the other, obviously, you know for sure it's going to be back this year. I just, I just want to point contract. out that like half the roster is not under contract. Right. That's so why yeah. this is a tough there's one. There's a lot but of But I guys. think there's an easy answer here. Okay. Tony Pollard. I hope so. Good God. See, I was going to say Michael Gallup. Gallup. Pollard. Either one. Jordan Lewis, maybe. maybe. You think? You may I, have to. I, I don't know if they are convinced that he is a starting caliber corner. Like, you I think they have that, a lot of options, though, right? No, I agreed, but I'm just saying, I, I don't. What do you stand between him and Cheeto Awuzie? Uh, I'm between those two. I'm the middle linebacker because those two are <laughs> those are my starters, right? And then unless you draft someone, I mean, which they need, to. they they will bring cornerbacks into this team one way or another. They have we, to. We've just put Byron Jones out. I, I don't like actually somebody asked me about this on Twitter before we came on the show. I don't know how how you can't and yeah. we're wrong all the time. I say it all like who knows they might make something work. Maybe Byron Jones really wants to stay here, but it just doesn't feel like it. I cannot. From you're that right. Standpoint. I can't come up with a logical argument for how he stays. It just doesn't feel like he wants. I, I just think he wants to test the market I and, he should, and he should. I think he is, and I think the market's willing to pay him more than the Cowboys. Yeah, are Byron Jones is one of the smartest players in that locker room, and he has to be aware of what good cornerback play is worth in free agency. Mm-hmm. Not and great cornerback play, even good he cornerback. Also, play. has to be aware that he has been in a contract year for just as long as Dak and Amari, and nobody's talking <laughs> no about it. Or, and we are now, but like all through the summer and the and the fall, it was. Dak and Amari, Dak and Amari, throw Zeke's contract holdout in there, too, and he's just like, okay, I guess my all-pro season didn't mean much to anybody. And, by the way, when the question's asked to Stephen Jones about who their priorities are, consistently since yep. last year, he's always said Dak, he's always said Amari. Yep. I have not, maybe you guys have, I've never heard him mention Byron no. as part of that. No. Nope. So it, it, it speaks volumes to me just that nobody, not just the fans and media, the, it doesn't seem like the people that are making the decisions are talking about him as a guy that is a priority for them. Is Oh, sorry. I hope he goes to a, a team with relatively small market but has some good money. You know, you know, will have you know a lot of money like, like Tampa a, Bay okay. or some but something like that. Because he goes to a big market with a lot with a passionate fan base. The first thing they're going to do when he signs this big number is they're going to look at his stats. And he doesn't have any. Mm-hmm. They're going to have to go to the next-gen stats and all that stuff to you know, pro football focus to show all that because he doesn't have any picks. 
And then he has an opportunity to be like Brandon Carr was, where he better be absolutely perfect because that price tag is the stat that people are going to look at and go, this guy doesn't make any plays. We just paid him $90 million and mm-hmm. he doesn't make any plays. So I just hope that you know he's going to go to a place, and maybe he will make plays. Maybe he'll make interceptions. I don't or, know. or that he's mentally tough enough to deal with the fact that everybody's going to be looking at him sideways he, because he's not. And I do think he is. And he has been because, yeah. remember, he's first-round pick that was yeah. ridiculed in his first few years, and he kind of overcame that. And so, I mean, I think everybody really likes Byron Jones and wishes him well, but it just doesn't seem like he's going to come back. Is that a mistake? And that's like that's the conversation that is raging on Twitter right now. Not for me. You don't think so? Not not if the Cowboys can get and you would know better than I do. If there are quality cornerbacks coming out of the draft that I feel like I can go and, and get that I feel like will be have the potential to be better, which I assume there are some that that pick, that are win the Cowboys pick, then I would rather go okay. back to the well on that one. Okay. Then what do you think about this scenario? He's he's not you didn't get him. Um, you didn't bring him back, and you you only got a couple of corners in free agency, but nothing that you're really like. Anthony Brown being one, and then you got some other fifth year guy. Mm-hmm. So now you're sitting at number seventeen, and then there's a corner right there from I don't know who, who's who's a decent corner, maybe seventeen. Um, C.J. Henderson, okay. Christian Fulton from, from LSU and Florida. Those yep. two. Oh, okay, those two guys, and they're pretty good. They're pretty good players. You asked for this. But <laughs> you wanted to go back to the hold well. On, hold on. But <laughs> no, I'm talking about LSU. Hmm? We got to throw out LSU, right? The the number sixth overall prospect mm-hmm. on their board has fallen to 17, and he's a defensive tackle. You can take him. Okay, so that's what I'm saying. I just it, you you want to get a corner, but you don't want to go into a draft pigeonhole. I, I get all that. My thought is, and I I don't know. Again, I need to go and look at all the free agents that are out there. If I'm going to pay top dollar, I'm at least looking for a guy top dollar that's going to get me some picks. Or even more importantly, going to get me some pass defenses. Like, I know that Byron can cover well, but I want to see. I want to see. Dollar for dollar. You can just. Same contract. Uh Byron Jones or Slay. I take Slay. Yeah. That's my point. Like, if I'm going to pay top dollar, I want a guy that's done it. And Byron just hasn't done that. And again, that doesn't. I'm not trying to say that Byron's not a good corner. Do you not? Don't you have to trade for Slay? Yeah. I don't know. Is he not a free agent? I don't believe he is, but the trade. And I need to look at him. the list of free agents. But my point is, Sorry. if I'm going to pay top dollar, I don't think Tampering. I don't think Byron <laughs> Byron is necessarily the top corner out there in the free agent market. I think he's up there among the top. I don't think he's necessarily the top. I want to see if there are other guys that are commanding that kind of salary that at least have some picks on their resume. He's got 20 pass breakups the last two seasons. How does that rank? I have no idea, but it's not like he doesn't get that. No, but, but that's my I, only. I, I'm interested to know how that ranks because that doesn't seem like an inordinately large number for two seasons. Ten each, not yeah, really. Yeah, that doesn't seem like a it's very not, large number for. It's not crazy high. Also, but okay. teams don't throw at him okay. as much as but they throw. I, I, you're, he doesn't. This this is the debate. He doesn't get picks, but there is a lot of value in just handling your half of the field. But it, is that also, and I said this on a previous show, is that also because they saw such opportunity on the other side? And maybe that's your okay, bigger well, problem. All right, then, they saw then, such opportunity okay. on the other side so then they you, were like, well, we don't necessarily bigger, need to mess around then over there. In that case, you have bigger problems in your secondary than just exactly. worrying about... I mean, and there is, and I think right now there are some bigger pro- problems in your secondary right now than just Byron Jones. That's also the reason why I don't know if I want to go out and spend as much money on Byron Jones, because I think you got to fill a lot of positions. In your there. theoretical future here, though, you're letting Byron walk, <laughs> and you just said you don't like the job that Cheeto, Cheeto is doing at all, and then you're going to plug... Not even the best cornerback in the draft class and expect him to excel from day one, and that's going to be better. E- either him or go out and get a better free agent cornerback. If I'm going to pay top dollar, go find me another free agent cornerback that has more picks. I don't They're think got- that's realistic. You think Byron is the top cornerback on the free agent market? Probably. Yeah, probably. I saw a list the other day that had him three, but I didn't go and look at the stats of the other guys. Let's dive into that. It's, kinda, it's, just, it's a weird situation. To- dynamic to just say I'm letting this guy go mm-hmm. and I'm now creating a big need. I, I get that, but guess what? You got a lot of you right. got a lot of things to consider. If Byron was the only free agent you have this year, then I'd be like, absolutely sign yeah. right. Byron back. Let's, That's not the case. Yeah. Let's go ahead and take our final break. When we come back, let's figure out who are the top free agent guys at the cornerback position and then discuss where Byron Jones ranks. Want to use what the pros use? How about the official men's skincare brand of the Dallas Cowboys? 
Jack Black. Right now, you can get the Jack Black Starter, a curated collection of Cowboys locker room favorites for just 10 bucks with free shipping. The starter includes four Jack Black skincare favorites plus a full-sized intense therapy lip balm. Go to getjackblack.com slash cowboys and use the code word TEAMJB. That's getjackblack.com slash cowboys. The Jack Black Starter, 10 bucks. Free shipping! Whether you're into being a part of this or more into something like this, SeatGeek has the tickets to the events you love. It's the easiest way to find, buy, and sell tickets. Plus, with their deal score technology, they'll recommend the best seats in the house at the best value. So the next time you're craving this, the SeatGeek app and let's go. SeatGeek. I'm Jay Novacek, former tight end for the Dallas Cowboys. Back in the day, I was the guy who always got the tough yards, and that's why I run with John Deere today. In fact, I have a John Deere 3025E tractor that can handle any yard work I need to do, even the tough yards way out back. So if you have one acre or a thousand, John Deere has the equipment that's just right for you. Visit a John Deere dealer today and run with us. We are the official tractor provider of your Dallas Cowboys. Your new apartment's big. Such a great deal. Uh, it's okay. Just okay? What's not too much? Right above the subway! Well, I bet you don't even notice it after the... That's my neighbor, Angus! A deal that's just okay is not okay. Get a great deal with America's Best Network. Come into an AT&T store to find out how to get one of our popular smartphones for $0 down. Based on GWS1 score September 2019. Back to the break. All right, we've been discussing Barry Jones and whether he should return with the or whether the Cowboys should try to pay him what he would be asking. We can talk for, about Whitney. But uh, <laughs> stop it. I got to go back and listen. It sounds like y'all oh had a spirited God. debate on We had a little we got we got after a little bit. Nick Nick wants him back, right? Yeah. I figured. Uh, <laughs> Here we go again. Here we go again. <laughs> I just think, I just, you know, I mean, I know, I know. No, you you happened, like your guys. You like your guys. Yeah, I mean, I, I like Witten. I just don't like. It's the whole Ricky Waters question. Okay, you want to get rid of him for who? For what? You know, like, like <laughs> Blake Thank Jarwin. You, Blake Jarwin. Yeah, Thank I mean, Blake Jarwin. I think, I think, I think there's a clear. I'm sorry. Yeah, I just shouldn't have done that. But anyway, y'all go ahead. We'll talk about this after the show. Are you at, okay, we came up with a name that I'm, you know, Chris Chris Harris is intriguing to me. He's, yeah. he's older than Byron. We're talking about cornerbacks now, guys. We're how much, you know, how much longer will he play at a high level? But he's, he's 31. Been a, been a lockdown corner at times in his yeah. life. He's, he's probably trying to get away from Denver. They don't look like they're going to be competing soon. He's the guy that you have to, or that type of player is who you sign in free agency to prevent you from being forced to take a corner in the first See, round. And it, if one falls to you, it doesn't mean you don't take right, one. That's exactly you, right. You just you don't have to. Because because guess what, you got to replace next year. You're probably going to be looking to replace Cheeto as well, right? So you still want to go out and get yourself. You're going to get yeah. even if you kept Byron, you still maybe probably want to draft a corner high in this draft, right? I think this. I think that is an overly optimistic idea of the type of player that they sign to ensure themselves like that's a that's a high-end signing like that's a guy that gets fans excited but that's a guy that, one of them and right now okay. they're running low on them okay. as of next year then, like if that's the case then the guy you draft replaces cheeto right the guy that the guy that you sign like just looking at the names like the guy that you sign to ensure yourself is like eli apple or i <laughs> I'm have, out. have y'all paid attention to what this team has done in free agency the last like no, six I years? That. I no, get you're that. Right. What I'm saying, what I'm saying pick, is that's the type of guy. The Eli thing. Apple, uh, Bradley Roby. Um, you, you could kick the tires on what's left of Josh Norman if you wanted to. Like that's the type of stuff this team has done in the past. Is not well, necessarily how much bare voice bones. Or input does Mike McCarthy have during the free agency? Whoa, whoa, whoa hold on. We just talked about it before. Jason Witten wants to come back, and he's not signed yet. He's got a big voice. Yeah, that's a great point. Great point, right. Which but again, it's like, well, we, I don't know what Mike McCarthy's used to doing during free agency. No, I'm, and you know, it, I would be, it would be a departure from what we've seen for the Cowboys to sign a contract that was worth more than two years and – tens of millions of dollars like those are not the types of deals you know randall cobb was their best addition yeah he was one year what five Five, yeah 
Alan Hearns even was two years eleven or you something know, like that. You like know that's who it's just they not try who, to do it in the draft, and that's my point. You so, know who their free agent signing is going to be at corner. Who? Anthony Brown. Yeah, I'd right. Be, I'd honestly be fine with that. But 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 I and that does give you some insurance, so that if you want to go into draft, you know that at least you got a body and an experienced body, and you can put him out there, and you feel. Can decent? play inside and yeah, outside. Yeah, you feel decent about you know, it. When that person told me that they were going to sign Anthony Brown, they said you got to have four. You got to have four. You do. So that just means they're going to draft somebody, and then they're honestly, it is. I'm if if Anthony Brown can be brought back on a decent deal, like just not breaking the bank, and I, I don't even want to throw numbers out there, but something that's not crazy, that gives you three, gives you two guys that can play in, inside because Jordan and. AB can both do it. Then you're still going to want to draft a corner, but you don't have to do it at right. 17. Right. What are you, dra- what are you signing that? Anthony Brown to? I, I don't know. Three oh, years? Three yeah. or four years. Because yeah. you know what that does? Again, and nobody's getting excited about this at all about Anthony Brown, but what that does is that covers you for two years because next year you're going to take a hit with one of those two guys is going to leave, right? George Jordan or Cheeto. Yeah, yeah, you both would think. Of them back. You so then think. that kind of covers you for that year, with mm. not to mention the guy you've drafted and all that. Barring something crazy, I probably would want to double dip at corner this year, just like they did with Cheeto and Jordan. I like, agree. not maybe not back to back like they did, but like second, fifth, first and fifth, yeah. second and sixth, something well, like yeah. that. You know, based off of what they do. You know, one of those guys is going to be a corner slash safety. Sure, played two years yeah. here, yeah. played well, a year there. We're forgetting that but. Donovan Donovan Wilson is going to be a Pro Bowler for this team. We're forgetting about that. Well, I since, say that with my tongue firmly planted in my cheek. I'm sorry. Okay, good. Since we started talking about the draft, and since a lot of people around the NFL have started creating mock drafts mm. and all of that, I wanted to ask each and one of you, what position would you? prefer to draft in the first round when the Cowboys come up. Dave, since you've been talking about the draft for weeks now, let's start with you. I mean, uh, the obvious choice, if it makes sense, is honestly cornerback. I just I just don't think Byron will be here. And if you could get a Christian Fulton, who is a really good player, by the way. It's not just because he went to LSU. Uh, but, I mean, there's a bunch of other guys. Um, or it might, well, or the other logical one is like it might line up that Edge rusher is a really good value there. AJ Epinesa is one of the best ones in this class. He could be there. Another LSU guy, I swear, Kalevin Chase on. It's not because I went to LSU. It's they because they were the no- well, national exactly. champions. Exactly. No, they've they were got the best team. They've got twenty five freaking players in this draft. Yeah, those are two guys. But then, you guys know I want to draft a wide receiver. Like I just, yeah. I mean. If we're sitting here saying, "Well, we feel all right about this cornerback, but maybe the value's a little a little strong," or you could take an insane wide receiver at 17 and turn this offense into an even bigger juggernaut. Like it's not responsible, but man, it sounds fun. Uh, like Hen- Henry Ruggs or CD Lamb on this team. Yeah. Let's Lamb's not go. gonna be there though. He right? could be. Really? 17? It's I doubt it, but it's voice I'd be up, shocked. <laughs> No, if he's there, if he's there and they don't run up there to get put his name in, then it would be so sur- right. lamb. It would be surprising. You're just saying that because he torched it. No, he didn't just touch <laughs> he torch torched Texas. Everybody. He torched everybody. He, he, like every weekend, really he was torching somebody. That no, guy's good. He really I think is the, good. I, the, this receiver class five is five disgusting. Positions, <laughs> but the one you didn't name that I think they really need is defensive tackle. Mm. That's another one. Draft me a defensive tackle, one of those big you're, guys in there. You okay, don't know about him yet, but you're going to fall in love with Javon Kenlaw. Kenlaw, yeah, yeah, I've heard about him. Yeah. I've seen a little bit of tape. 6'6", six, 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 310, can play all. I mean, he could play three. He could play end in a 3-4. He could play nose tackle. He can play three technique. Homeless. He he yeah he was, he's the one that was home. Yeah, he grew up. I think his mom is still struggling. He's got a really cool story. Knows how to knows how to struggle. Knows how to overcome adversity. Mm-hmm. He might not yeah. be there either. I know. It's possible. This is everybody will fall in love with that guy. It's very it w- there's going to be a really good player there for him. I just don't yeah. know can what I the just, value will be. Can I just do my Stephen Jones impression? Yeah. We're just going to take best player available. We're going to look at the board, we're going to study the board and you know whatever it is. Honestly, that's how I would take like lie. when you first asked that question, my thought was I'm the wrong person to ask that cuz I'm a big believer in. I understand the Justin Herbert fan. I understand you get the position you want. But I also believe opportunities present themselves based upon thinking about it from the best player available. If a guy drops to you and he is an outstanding player and it's at a position, by the way, I don't think there's a position on this team where you're like, well, we can't use him. Okay, Justin Herbert, Oregon, he fell. If you feel great about Justin Herbert and you think he's 
better? Like, I've heard some people throw around the, op- the option of, do you maybe look at trading Dak and going back to the well? I don't believe that. Nah. But but I do think that you look at, you look, look across this uh, across the landscape of this team. I don't think there's a position right now, in my opinion, I can't use a player. Like that doesn't mean it's a player position of need, but there's not a position where if I have a great player available available to me, I can't figure out how to get. Okay, him on let's the field. say there there are good options at each position. What would be the position that you if would? If they're want? all equal, if they're all equal, give me a big time safety. Mm. I just think they've been waiting, and I think that makes everything else better. I think your cornerbacks get better. I think your pass rush has a little more time. I think everything gets better if you give me – like I'm very interested in a guy like Delpit because he's a guy that to me you might be able to get a lot of value out of somebody like him because this last year wasn't as good as the year before. And maybe the ankle injury really was the issue, and maybe he really is a great player. But because of last year, he can drop a little farther in the first round and you can get him. Maybe you can trade down and even get a guy like Delpit. But if you can come up with that kind of like if you come up with a safety who is a game changing type safety, I'm all in on that. I think that's the position of need that the Cowboys haven't had forever. Here's the thing. I agree with you. I came to this bummer of a conclusion the other day. Grant Delpit and Xavier McKinney, those are the two names you're going to hear. LSU and Alabama, they're widely considered the two best safeties. I don't think either one of them is as good as Derwin James. Really? And the Cowboys were not interested in Derwin James at 19, let yeah, alone but 17. But that's also different because you're talking about a different coaching staff. And we know that coaching staff had very yeah, you're not very wrong. interesting okay. ideas on, on player acquisition. I still think, I don't. I mean, the, the front office is largely in place. You're right. And Mike McCarthy and his staff are going to have an input on this. But I think some of those philosophies go higher than the coaching staff. So do you too. think Delpit's 2018 season was an aberration? No, I think he's a hell of a player. He's a really, really good player okay. and should be a first-round pick. I don't think he's as good as Derwin James was coming out okay, of school. Okay, maybe we don't get Derwin James. But, but if we get a really, really, really good safety, does that not help this team? Yeah, but yeah. will the Cowboys be willing to draft him with that high of a yeah, but the thing uh, is, asset is the my 23, question. Would you trade back to maybe a 23, 24 well, range? But sure. Derwin, James, Derwin James isn't slipping to 17 based off of what how he played. And maybe that'll help the Cowboys. I mean, because no right. one expect. I mean, he, there's other teams that would have drafted him if they thought he would translate the way he did into the NFL. And he was a really, really good player, dynamic player. So I think that the, the Cowboys might look at that and go, you know what? We were wrong on that. This guy was better than we, we thought. It's possible. And anyway, man, Grant Delpit could do so much for you. And there are people with concerns about his tackling ability, but I'll take his coverage ability all day. Like, I got other – I mean – I'm paying a boatload of money to two linebackers that are supposed to handle the tackling. Were those tackling issues a problem in 2018, or was it just last year? They were better in 18, but he, I mean, he's got documented issues with well, tackling. Well, what's that's an gonna, issue that we talked about last bugaboo. year a lot? Yeah, tackling. Yeah, absolutely. So, Get, eh. he's he's got eight picks the last two years. He can so play. That's the part I want. So who's your safety? I want that center fielder. He who's can play center field. He can play nickel. He can do all that stuff. Who's your band aid at safety in March? Because you got to get somebody to. Jeff Heath. Jeff Heath. I said that a month ago, and y'all got mad. I think it's bad. <laughs> Could sign Jeff Heath for pennies on the dollar by NFL standards, like three-year deal. I don't know. I said this. six million dollars. Is that crazy? Be, Eight million. God, be, you're so mad right now. Just be I'm careful. Mad. No, just, just be careful about that because remember, where's what's Jeff Heath's best position? Special teams. Okay. Rich Bisaccia, sitting in Oakland. He's mm-hmm. the coach there. Ooh. Jason Garrett, that staff. Jerome Henderson. Don't say this. There with the Giants. I'm just saying. Yeah, but I think he's going to have a better free agent market than you think. He's yeah. got a he's yeah. got a house here. He just had a kid. He'll have a house he, he'll f- forever because he, he doesn't pay state taxes. Right. Just Emmett had a house here when he went to Arizona. Like it happens. Bring him I just back. You can, you can pick up Heath. a kid and move him. I can trust <laughs> me. Like you, they don't have to stay in the same place. I don't care who gets mad at me for Sorry. saying this. Dad's going to <laughs> Dad's going to Jacksonville. <laughs> I'm just saying. Come the, on, kid. The commute, the 10 minute commute down the Dallas North Toll. Way is better no, than you're right. moving the, to New York. If the money's football the same, it, yeah, it'll be. But it also will be about opportunity too. I mean, you got to remember this is a football player, and yes. he may say, "I got more opportunity Absolutely. in Oakland or more opportunity in New York than I'm going to have in Dallas." Um, I'm he seems su- like a Vegas guy. Mm, yeah, for sure. He Vegas, does. Sorry. He goes with the team. He goes with the. I'm cool kids. super Oakland, duper duper interested oh, in upgrading the safety position. I'd love to have Delpit or McKinney on this team, but I would still make Jeff Heath a high priority in March. Just as a band-aid. Yep. That's all. All right. 
Well, I'm not I'm not totally against that. I'm just saying I don't want I really don't want to go into next season with him as your penciled starter. Hopefully like, not. I, I think they should I need I think they need to upgrade that position. Antoine Winfield is another name I want to throw on y'all's radar. Hmm. Junior, because he is that guy's son. That and I was about to good. say that yes. name sounds his very good. If he's anything like him, <laughs> his dad was a really good player. Yeah, he was. His son hits like an SOB and has really good coverage skills. Okay, so, take him. I mean, where's he? Where's he projected right now? Where do you go to school? Minnesota. Okay, where's dad went to Ohio. State. I would yeah. hope. I would hope to get him at pick fifty-one in the second round, but it's it's hard to. Nail down all those evaluations because I rem- you remember Darnell Savage actually mm-hmm. the kid that Green Bay drafted he was like some people were saying he was like a third round pick and Green Bay took him in the first round so I would I th- and Winfield's probably like a second round pick though okay Just all saying. right well if I can get that kind of guy in second round I mean there are all kinds of possibilities here so we shall see when the time comes let's we'll see what happens all right well anything else you guys want to add we're I done I think we're good. We're good? Is there going to be a show next week? I don't think uh, so. I don't know. Is I won't be here. No, nah, we'll be at the... Oh, uh, a senior... Com- no, the no, Combine. I'm combine. sorry. Combine. Oh, yeah. yeah so, like so right Combine. Around, yeah. So we will be doing these shows. draft picks. We actually will be doing the draft show, I think, throughout next week, right? Yeah. We'll be we doing will. multiple episodes of that. So I don't know if we'll have a break episode, but we will have multiple episodes. I of can't wait show. to join it. The draft show? I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no. Go I don't think you're film. welcome. I don't think so. No, yeah. I, we're going to get Nick on to just evaluate the drills. And he's Dave's like, wait, like, I like, like that guy. We'll give you half a segment. You yeah. Come on, give us the latest Cowboys news. And Three we'll go cone drill. Yeah. All right, yeah. guys. Well, make sure just to visit the website just to know when the those shows are going to be happening. And that's it for today. Thank you so much for tuning in. For Derek Eagleton, Nick Inman, David Hellman, and Amber Garcia, this has been The Break on DallasCowboys.com. Radio. This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys?